All right, let's get going, folks. It has been a long time since I've streamed <laughs> anything. Uh, so welcome back. As always, I am E. Uh, I am on Twitter at CEL10E. And this is gonna be uh, a new game for streaming. Not Certainly not a new game to me. Uh, it's one of my favorite games. This is Stardew Valley. It is um, bizarrely listed by Twitch tags here as a uh, sports game. So I guess I'm gonna have to do some sports. Um, not what I expected, but here we go. <laughs> um, I will give a heads up here at the beginning that I am playing with um, a copious number of mods. Um, I'm just gonna shoot the... Shoot the link to my mod list here in the chat. If anyone wants to check them out, you will notice some are going to be quite a bit more obvious than others. Um, one of the notable mods I'll be playing with is a farm layout that is, I'd say, about a fifth of the size <laughs> of any of the normal ones. It's very small, uh, so that will be a, a fun little challenge. So without further ado, let's get going. Um, I'll also note that I am playing with a mod that changes dialogue to refer to the farmer um, as gender neutral. So it doesn't really matter which um, gender I pick here on the selection screen, it doesn't really affect that much. Just picking through hairstyles here. I'm basically gonna make myself. Um, I did not have any really inspired uh, decisions come to mind for, for what my farmer should be. So it's just gonna be little old me. Gotta pick a shirt. There are so many shirts in this game. I'm on like 25 out of hundreds. I'll pick this nice blue one with buttons. That's that's a nice nice look. Hmm. No, I want pants, not a skirt. Uh, my name is E. My hair is a little redder than that. Give myself some dark, nice dark jeans. As one does. I want a cat as my pet. And my farm will be called. See, this is the hardest part. The uh, name of the map I'm using is Small Beach Farm. But that's a little unoriginal <laughs> to just use that uh, as my farm name. Let's see. Blanking on names. Oh, I'm thinking of a farm name. What's my favorite thing? And I do know what the game uses this for. So I'm gonna make it a food. Um, I'm gonna make it peaches. I'm gonna call my farm. You know, let's let's keep going with that. Let's call this um, Fruit Valley Farm. 
No, not valley. That's already used. Through veil. No? Hmm. I don't like that. We'll call it little- No! <laughs> it doesn't fit. I was gonna say Little Orchard, but I was one character too long. Orchard Grove. Still too long. I keep coming up with foresty names. Is this the part of the game that's gonna stump me? Fine, I'll call it Ocean View Farm. You'll, you'll notice that we do get an ocean view. So I'm gonna watch the opening cutscene. Uh, this is my grandfather lying on his bed by the fireplace with a letter. And for my very special grandchild. I want you to have this sealed envelope. Maybe I should be doing an old grandpa voice. No, no, don't open it yet. Have patience. Now, listen close. There will come a day when you feel crushed by the burden of modern life. And your bright spirit will fade before a growing emptiness. When that happens, my child, you'll be ready for this gift. His fingers are twitching. <laughs> now, let Grandpa rest. Then we have XX years later. Uh, cubicles at a very bleak looking corporation, Joja. J-O-J-A. Uh, we see the camera panning over the cubicles. Lots of very dismal looking computers and people at work. Very stained and dirty. And the slogan on the wall, life's better with Joja. <laughs> There's a skeleton at one of the desks. <laughs> I'd never noticed that. Oh my goodness. Uh, and then we see me in my cubicle, looking at my computer. And my desk drawer opens and I have Grandpa's letter inside. Dear E, if you're reading this, you must be in dire need of a change. The same thing happened to me long ago. I'd lost sight of what mattered most in life. Real connections with other people and nature. So I dropped everything and moved to the place I truly belong. I've enclosed the deed to that place, my pride and joy, Ocean View Farm. It's located in Stardew Valley on the southern coast. It's the perfect place to start your new life. This was my most precious gift of all, and now it's yours. I know you'll honor the family name, my dear. Good luck. Love, Grandpa. Now I can stop doing Grandpa voice. Oh no, I can't. P.S. If Lewis is still alive, say hi to the old guy for me, will ya? Okay, now I can stop doing my bad Grandpa voice. So I get on a bus. And we're driving down a very scenic highway. can see an ocean in the distance. Lots of green hills. 
Stardew Valley, half a mile. <laughs> With a little bird. Hello, you must be E. We're talking to, um, <laughs> so here's another note for those of you watching. Um, a lot of the uh, NPCs in the game will look different from the way they usually do. That is because I am using a mod called uh, Diverse Stardew Valley, which um, changes the, uh, the game, which originally had a cast of entirely, um, you know, all white people except for one black character and one mixed race character to be a lot more diverse. So um, you will notice that a lot of people are not white anymore, thanks to this mod. Uh, this is Robin. She is a Southeast Asian woman with black hair tied up in a bun, and she has greeted me at the bus stop. I'm Robin, the local carpenter. Mayor Lewis sent me here to fetch you and show you the way to your new home. He's there right now, tidying things up for your arrival. The farm's right over here, if you'll follow me. And we enter the farm. There's a bunch of grass, uh, tall, tall, weedy grass in front of the door. This is Ocean View Farm. <laughs> I jump in the air with surprise. What's the matter? Sure, it's a bit overgrown, but there's some good soil underneath that mess. With a little dedication, you'll have it cleaned up in no time. And here we are, your new home. Uh, Mayor Lewis has come out of the house. He is a um, sort of middle-aged to elderly white man. He's got a uh, gray, <laughs> bushy mustache and a, and a cap on his head. Ah, the new farmer. Welcome, I'm Lewis, mayor of Pelican Town. You know, everyone's been asking about you. It's not every day that someone new moves in. It's quite a big deal. So, you're moving into your grandfather's old cottage. It's a good house. Very rustic. <laughs> Camera pans up to look at the house. It's, uh, it's quite small. It's got some dents, or like, chips in the wood, and it's... Uh, Robin raises her hand. Rustic, that's one way to put it. Crusty might be a little more apt, though. Lewis, rude. Don't listen to her, E. She's just trying to make you dissatisfied so that you buy one of her house upgrades. Robin, hmm. Anyway, you must be tired from the long journey. You should get some rest. Tomorrow, you ought to explore the town a bit and introduce yourself. The townspeople would appreciate that. And Lewis walks off, but then remembers something. Oh, I almost forgot. If you have anything to sell, just place it in this box here. I'll come by during the night to collect it. Well, good luck. And Lewis and Robin leave. So there we go. We've been introduced to the world of Stardew Valley. I'm gonna fiddle with some settings real quick. Uh, this game does not save settings from game, like from game to game, which is quite irritating. So I'm just gonna change some mod settings 
and game settings, zoom us out a little bit so we can see things, and here we are. Here's our little house. Uh, it's not very big, just got a, a single bed, a little table with one chair, a little TV, a little stove and sink, and a present on the floor. What's in here? We received 15 parsnip seeds. Here's a little something to get you started. From Mayor Lewis. So we have two quests in our journal. One to introduce ourselves to everyone in town. There are 28 people we need to find and introduce ourselves to. And we need to cultivate and harvest a parsnip. So here we go. I'm gonna just come outside and start cleaning up my farm a little bit. You can see that we are right at the water's edge. Um, on a normal farm map, we would have quite a bit of space to uh, go down. But here I've got about uh, maybe eight to 10 tiles between my house and the water. So not very much space to work with. A lot of grass and rocks and weeds. I'm just gonna chop up here, give myself some working space. One of the cool things that the author of this uh, farm map did um, was made all of the grass and sand tiles of the beach are all diggable, so I can plant seeds on any tile of this map, whereas usually only dirt tiles are diggable. There are no dirt tiles on this map, I don't think. Um, I'm gonna cut down a couple trees that are in my way. I think I'm gonna start planting my crops beside the house instead of in front of it. It's only 9 a.m. and I'm already down to half my energy for the day. I forgot that the <laughs> start of this game, you really cannot do much at once. So let's see, I've got 15 seeds. Let me dig. There's five. Ten. Fifteen spots. And water. So one of the challenges of this playthrough is going to be how to get my farm running and sustainable with the extremely limited amount of space that I have. Um, because most of the Stardew Valley modding community, for good reason, is about making your farm space bigger <laughs> because people want to plant more things and, you know, make more profit, have more, more farm space. And this mod explicitly gives you much less. So managing that will be, will be something fun. I've also, at the same time, installed a mod that makes progression in the game harder by uh, changing the requirements for the community center, which is something we'll figure out in a couple of in-game days. I'm just crafting a chest here to put some extra items in. All of that wood that I just collected. Chopping down some trees. I'm gonna cut down. I'm gonna cut down one more, and then I think it'll be time to go meet some NPCs. Yep, yeah, that's my energy pretty much out for the day.
All right, let's go to town, shall we? I'm gonna stop by the bus stop first because <laughs> during the opening cutscene, I actually saw that there was a couple of foraging items on the ground here, a couple of dandelions. Uh, Tooltip, not the prettiest flower, but the leaves make a good salad. I think dandelions are quite pretty, in fact. And here's Pelican Town. Um, there's a, going to be a bit of visual glitches because I have two different map mods installed and haven't quite um, reconciled them with each other yet. I'm using uh, Carmilla's maps. I'm also using um, the Stardew Valley enhanced um, maps. And they are not explicitly compatible with each other quite yet, although I think uh, one or both of the authors are working on it. So you may see some slight visual issues, but hopefully not too much. Um, so coming into town from the west, uh, there's a little bit of a community garden down here, in which is standing... Come here, come out from behind this tree. This is Harvey. He is the uh, local doctor. He is a Punjabi man um, with a Sikh turban on. And he says, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Harvey, the local doctor. I perform regular checkups and medical procedures for all the residents of Pelican Town. It's rewarding work. I hope you'll find your own work equally rewarding in time. He's very nice. I just saw someone else walking by. There she is. This is Caroline. Hello, you must be E, the new farmer. I'm Caroline. Uh, she is a middle-aged Filipino woman, uh, currently wearing a uh, blue Kalmyk scarf. My husband runs the general store here. And have you met my daughter, Abigail? She's the pale one with the purple hair. Uh, standing next to her is Jody. Oh, you aren't exactly how I imagined, but that's okay. I'm Jody. It's a quiet little town, so it's very exciting when someone new moves in. Having a farmer around could really change things. Uh, Jody is a Middle Eastern woman with a currently wearing a pale blue uh, headscarf. Uh, here's one of the local kids. Oh, a stranger. My name's Vincent. Mama says not to talk to strangers, but you seem okay. Uh, that's Jody's son. <laughs> he's... I don't know how old he's supposed to be. He looks about, I don't know, seven or eight years old by, by the look of his portrait. Uh, so this blue house down here, this is Jody's house. She has another son, Sam, who we'll meet hopefully in a bit. Ah, here's Evelyn. Why, hello, and welcome to our little community, dear. You can call me Granny if you like. Uh, Evelyn is a, an elderly Samoan woman. And she, yeah, she's basically town grandmother. She's very sweet. Currently standing next to the flower beds, doing some tending work. Here's a, a young woman named Maru. Oh, aren't you the one who just moved in? I'm Maru. I've been looking forward to meeting you. You know, with a small town like this, a new face can really alter the community dynamic. It's exciting! Uh, Maru is a mixed-race um, black girl. She has um, frizzy dark hair with the ends uh, dyed pink. I know that she works at the... Um, the clinic with Harvey. Speaking of which, I'm gonna run into the general store quick before it shuts for the day and meet Pierre, um, who is a Chinese man who runs the local general store. Hey, it's Mix E. <laughs> I've never said Mix uh, out loud as a as an honorific. Mix E, the new farmer. I'm Pierre, owner of the local general store. 
you're looking for seeds, my shop is the place to go. I'll also buy produce from you for a good price. A little agriculture could really inject new life into the local economy. And shopping in here is Leah. Uh, she is a Native American woman, probably in her late 20s. Hello, it's nice to meet you. You picked a good time to move here. The spring is lovely. Yeah, so it is, just as I know, it is Monday, the first of spring, uh, year one. There's a calendar outside the general store, which we can always consult for events like that. Let's see. Oh gosh, there's a bunch of people around. Let's see. Here's Sam. That's Jody's other son. Hey, I'm Sam. Good to meet you. Oh, he doesn't have any more dialogue. Uh, Sam, uh, again, is like, I don't know, late teens. Um, he has blonde hair and an undercut and pierced ears. Um, let's see, down by the saloon, here is Alex. Alex is Evelyn's grandson. <laughs> There's a lot of people to introduce at once, so no worries if people are not following along. There are a lot of characters in this game that you basically have to meet them all at the beginning and then slowly learn who they are over time. Oh hey, so you're the new farmer, huh? Cool. I'll see you around. Cool. Cool indeed. Um, oh, somebody joined Maru. Here's Penny. Penny is a, a young white woman, probably early 20s. Oh, hello. I'm Penny. And nothing else to say. Uh, it's starting to get dark. I'm gonna head into the saloon. The Star Drop Saloon. Food and Spirits. Right in the center of town. Um, is a place where a lot of the villagers go at night, especially on weekend nights. Uh, you'll find some of the regulars here on a daily basis. Chiefly Gus, who is the manager and, you know, owner of the saloon. Well, hello there! I'm Gus, chef and owner of the Star Drop Saloon. Stop in if you need any refreshments. I've always got hot coffee and cold beer at the ready. Uh, Gus is a... I think the mod um, intent for him is Turkish. Uh, Turkish man, a great mustache, just very jovial kind of guy. Got Pam. Hey, kid. The name's Pam. Hey, kid, I'd buy you a drink if I could afford it. Uh, she is Penny's mother. Got a curly blonde hair. Here's Emily, who works at the saloon. Ooh, I can read it on your face. You're gonna love it here in Pelican Town. If you're ever looking for something to do in the evening, stop by the saloon. That's where I work. Yeah, Emily, I know. I'm behind the counter. I'm <laughs> with you. I'm talking to you. Uh, Emily is a black girl with blue... Uh, dyed blue hair. And we've got over here by the fireplace, drinking by himself. This is Shane. I don't know you. Why are you talking to me? Uh, Shane is a Hispanic man. He is probably late 20s. Wearing pretty ratty clothes. Uh, let's see, nobody's in the arcade. I don't think anyone else is actually in the saloon on a Monday night. It's kind of sad. It is, let's see, it's 7.40 p.m. Probably won't find anyone else to talk to unless I break into someone's house. And there's... <laughs> I can't actually do that. Um, there's no breaking and entering. So I think I'm just gonna run home. I can sell the three whole flowers I picked up. 
Put them in the bin. Lewis will pick them up overnight. I'll turn on the, the campfire. <laughs> turn on. I'll light the campfire. It's down here on the beach. I'll also pull some sap and wood out to make a couple of torches. Just to put over here near the fence and near my mailbox as sort of pathfinding lights. If I ever get home, you know, really late. And in my house, I have got my fireplace on. That gives me light indoors. I'm gonna move my single chair to the other side of the table so I can access my stove. There isn't really much I can do with it at the moment, but but it's there. Um, 9 9.30 p.m. I think it's time to go to bed. Go to sleep for the night? Yes. Eighty-two coins from selling those plants. Very nice. I started with five hundred. All right, day two. What have I got in the mail? Hello there. Just got back from a fishing trip. You should come down to the beach sometime. I've got something for you. Signed, Willie. We need to go meet Willie at the beach. Uh, I'm gonna just water my parsnips. I'll probably go into town and buy some more crops today. Get some more seeds going. But it's only 6.50 a.m., so not yet. Um, piers, and I think everything opens at 9 in Stardew Valley. I can't think of any store that different opening time. Just leveled up my foraging skill. Uh, I should be able to get seeds from trees now. Which is good because there aren't that many trees on my farm. It doesn't start until the next day. Well, I'm not gonna cut down the last tree. I think there might be two more. I'm not gonna cut down uh, what else is there until I know. Let's see. Oh, new quest to the beach. Um, how am I doing on introductions? 17 out of 28 people greeted, so I'm missing 11. Um, I'm just gonna make some spots. For some crops here, I think I'm gonna put uh, a line of green beans, maybe six green beans, and then hopefully I'll have enough to buy 15 potato seeds. So that's the other thing I wanna plant at this point. As always, I'm going to check the bus stop for any foraging. Looks like nothing today. And 
and we'll go straight to Piers. Uh, I'm gonna check the calendar. Let's see. So nothing's happening until Sunday the 7th, which is Lewis's birthday. I'm good all week. There's a notice on the board. Pierre is in need of Georgia Cola. We'll pay 75 gold for it. Um, that is also the sell price of Georgia Cola. So basically he just wants it delivered. Um, Alright, so I'm gonna get two, three, four, five, six beans. And... Well, eight potatoes. It's as much as I can afford. That's all right. I'll redo my, my plot. Uh, while I'm in town, I'm also going to head. Hi, Emily. I work part-time at Gus's saloon. It pays the bills. Thank you. I lost track of where I was going. I'm going to the beach. I'm gonna go meet Willie. So I get teleported straight to the pier out in the middle of the ocean. And Willie, a uh, middle-aged, sort of scruffy white man with a, a ratty cap, is smoking at the end of it. A long pipe. Oh, hi there, kid. Heard there was a newcomer in town. Good to finally meet you. Ah, I'm still trying to unwind from a month out on the salty seas. It was a big haul. I sold a lot of good fish. Finally saved enough to buy me a new rod. I don't know what accent I'm doing, I apologize. Here, I want you to have my old fishing rod. It's important to me that the art of fishing stays alive. And hey, maybe you'll buy something from the shop once in a while. I have acquired the bamboo pole. Willie looks pensively out at the sea. There's good water here in the valley. All kinds of fish. Oh yeah, my shop's back open now, so come by if you need supplies. I'll also buy anything you catch. If it smells, it sells. <laughs> That's what my old pappy used to say anyway. And he goes back to smoking. So out here on the pier is Willie's Fish Shop, which is a nice little building. Um, and it's a good spot for fishing. In fact, I see some bubbles in the water that indicated a good fishing spot. I'm gonna see what I can catch for a little bit out here. It's 11 a.m., so... Pretty good day for it. I apologize if I don't talk very much during the fishing minigame. Um, <laughs> it is quite stressful. You have to basically click rapidly to keep your bar at the right height behind the little fish icon. And some of them are little bastards. Especially when you're at very low fishing skill, um, your your little bar that you're clicking up and down is very small. Oh good, I just caught some trash. Oh gosh, I'm out of energy for the day. I hadn't even noticed. Oops. Alright, so I just caught a piece of seaweed, um, which I'm going to eat, because it'll give me a little bit of energy. Uh, I could also eat the two fish that I caught. I think I'd prefer to sell them. Uh, in fact, I'll sell them to Willy, so I can go buy a couple more seeds. Maybe, like, one more seed, or two. Now I actually have to run off the beach. Oh, there's a couple of things washed up. Uh, an oyster, 
and a clam. Willie would probably buy those too, but I'm not running back. Let's see, 1.30 p.m. on a Tuesday. Uh, it might be, I might be in time to catch the fitness club at the store. Yes, the ladies of town have a, an aerobics class every every week. Well, I won't interrupt them while they're working out. I'll wait a minute. Let's see, can I buy one more packet of potato seeds? That's fine. Lewis is in the store. Good morning, Mayor Lewis. I do all my grocery shopping here. Oh, he's just gonna say that over and over. Joja, the corporation that we used to work for, um, also has a supermarket in town. But they're evil. And should never be patronized. Let's see, so we've got five ladies doing the aerobics class here. We've got Jody uh, lifting a barbell. We've got Emily dancing. We've got Caroline. I don't know what she's doing. Leg lifts of some sort. Robin is stepping on and off a uh, exercise board. And Marnie, who is the only one here that we haven't met yet, is jump roping. I don't know what those boards are called that you step on and off of. I have one for Wii Fitness. Maybe that's what Robin's doing and we just can't see the, the TV. Oh my gosh, how long do they go? It's 3 p.m. 3.50 p.m. Ladies, are you almost done? I want to talk to all of you. There they go. All right. Let's talk to Emily, because she's gonna leave. No, I already talked to her today. Hi, Jody. Oh, my arms feel like gelatin. Caroline. You're looking really fit, Jody. Those dumbbells do wonders, don't they? Robin. We meet every week to encourage each other to stay healthy. They're just repeating the same dialogue. Marnie. I'm gonna sleep well tonight. I guess since I met her at, uh, at class, I don't actually get her unique introduction thing. Now I've met Marnie. Let's see. It's 4.30. I'm gonna go next door to the saloon and see if I can meet George, who's Evelyn's husband. Uh, Alex's grandfather. Grandpa George. He's sitting in here watching TV. Again, an elderly uh, Samoan man. Huh, it's irritating to have to meet all these new people, huh? Name's George, by the way. Now buzz off. Huh. Um, he is in a wheelchair, uh, watching TV. Say hi to Evelyn while I'm at it. Don't mind my husband, George. He isn't very friendly to strangers. If you get to know him better, he'll warm up to you. Thanks, Evelyn. I'm sure you two could become good friends one day. Since you're so interested in my husband, I'll let you in on a little secret. He really likes leeks. You can find them in the mountains this time of year. He had four lines in a row. That's more than usual. Let's see, is anyone else out in town this evening? It's five o'clock. Let's see. Oh, here's some um, Penny and the kids. This town's safe, but I always walk the children home anyway. Uh, Penny tutors um, Vincent, who we've met before. <sighs> Mom won't let me have any more gummies today. And Jazz, who is um, an Afro-Latina young girl. She is... Marnie's niece and Shane's cousin. Um, and she says, Uh, hi. Uh, she's very shy. 
probably also about seven or eight years old. Let's see, I don't see anyone else out and about. So I will make a stop by the saloon. Say hi to whoever's in there. And then probably head home to plant my my new seeds. Um, actually looks like nobody's in here that that um, is different from yesterday. So I'll just do my rounds. Hi, Shane. Didn't you hear me the first time? Leave me alone. And Gus. I sell different dishes each week, so make sure and check in every now and then. You might taste something spectacular. Just let me know if you have any allergies. Okay, see you around. Gus is sweet. I actually don't buy food from him that much because I'm usually very short on money, as you can see. Pam says, hey Gus, give me another round. So that's where she's at. Um, yeah, Gus is sweet. He he cares for this town a whole lot. Let's see. I have enough so planting doesn't take any energy. Um, watering, on the other hand, does. So I might not get to water these until tomorrow, unless I can find a forage item. I'm gonna go to the forest. Found a dandelion. That'll help a bit. Oh, hi, Leah. She's out at night. Hello, neighbor. We both live outside of town. Does that mean something? Only if you want it to. Let's see. All right, sorry about that. I got an unexpected call from my roommate. Uh, unofficial break there. She's away for a few days and uh, her dad was coming over to take care of her cats. Um, and I knew about this sort of in a general sense but she hadn't reminded me specifically, <laughs> so I needed a quick reminder. All right, I'm gonna eat this dandelion that I found and hope it gives me enough energy to water at least six beans. How am I doing? All right, good. I got everything. We're all fine. Um, I'm gonna keep my piece of trash because selling it will do nothing. And go to bed. Level one foraging. Ooh, 
I think it's our first rainy day. Yes, perfect. No watering for me. So I'm gonna check, let's see, on the far side of my farm, I don't have any trees. I think this is where I will end up putting trees. Uh, to plant for tapping like maple syrup and stuff like that. Um, but I need tree seeds first. So, I'm gonna start the day by going toward the forest. And doing some tree chopping in the rain. There are three types of um, wild growing trees in Stardew Valley. There's pine trees, um, maple trees, and oak trees. I'm gonna see if I can't get a couple of seeds for each. Nothing from that tree. There we go, there's my second maple seed. I just need to remember where to find oak trees. There we go. The oak tree and the maple tree look extremely similar. Um, the oak tree just has basically smaller leaves than the maple tree, um, which makes them very hard to tell apart. At least for me. Um, I think I'm pretty good at telling them apart in real life. Alright, so I have two pine cones, two maple seeds, two oak acorns, and not a ton of energy left, so I'm going to run back to the farm. And plant these. Yeah, I'm gonna plant them. I've got this little river running through the farm, and I'm gonna plant them on the other side of that. There's two pine trees, two maple, three oak in a nice line. Um, I also picked up two wild horseradishes out there, um, which I'll probably end up eating today for energy. Yeah. Um, but for now, I'm gonna do some fishing. I'm gonna run into town and fish in the town river. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna drop off my farming tools first. Just keep my hoe and my fishing pole. Bus stop check. Two items. A dandelion and a leek. Ooh, a silver star leek.
And I'm gonna fish uh, right down here in the sort of southeast corner of town. See what I can catch today on a rainy day. <laughs> Some algae. Perfect. I've got a treasure chest that's appeared. Let me see if I can catch it. And also keep the fish. That's one of the hardest parts of the fish mini game. But I got it! So I caught a smallmouth bass and <laughs> two lumps of coal. Great, perfect treasure, thank you, game. Another small mouth bass, and I've leveled up my fishing skill. Lots of bass. Lots of coal! I just got five more coal out of a treasure chest. That's the, uh, I caught a record length fish. Sound effect. I don't think there's actually any effect of fish size in this game. Um, except bragging rights, I guess. Ten pieces of bait. That'll be useful eventually. When I get a fishing pole I can attach bait to. New record again. Ooh, my first gold starfish. Uh, I'm still catching exclusively smallmouth bass. It's funny, I'd actually like to catch some trash. Um, because Pierre asked for a Joja Cola, <laughs> a soda, and that's one of the items you can fish up as trash. Which means you get it for free. That was algae again. fish that I was not qualified for. Oh no, I've just exhausted myself. Uh, I forgot to look at my um, energy bar. I should have eaten one of these things first. Mm -hmm.
Alright, so exhaustion means I have to walk everywhere. And then go to bed, basically. Which is, you know, it's fine. It's fine. I don't know if eating something will cure exhaustion. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I'll go say a very sleepy hi in the saloon. Hi, Alex. Alex is holding a football. Looks like a good day to play catch, huh? I'd ask you to throw the ball around, but you don't really seem like the sports type. Um, I get a choice of how to respond here. Um, uh, I think I'll say I'm, I'm fine watching from a distance. Yeah, some people just aren't made for sports. Thanks, Alex. Alright. Everyone in the saloon is wearing their rain gear today. Leah's inside. Leah says, maybe I should cook something new and exciting today. Something spicy. Thanks, Leah. Chat with Pam. Nothing like a sip of the good stuff to warm these old bones. Thanks. For letting me know. Emily. I've heard rumors of rare and powerful magic rings forged long ago by forgotten civilizations. I'm not sure if it's true or just a fairy tale. Gus. Glad to see you, young lady. I've got a cold beer here on the house. What's today's battle? Lay it on me. Um, I have no money. Oh, yes. We've all been there, if we're not there now. But, you know, your future looks bright. You're a landowner. I'm sure things will work out. You know you're right, Gus. I am a landowner. That's, uh, that's a pretty cozy position. I wish my character's eyes weren't, like, shut when I'm walking around exhausted. Uh, Harvey the doctor is in here. Remember to cover your mouth when you sneeze. Then make sure to wash your hands. Thanks. Willie. I need a little warm-me-up to be ready for another cold night on the ocean. Shane uh, has his hood up, drinking over here. Yeah, I know he wants me to leave him alone, but I can't help it. <laughs> Go bother someone else. We'll both be happier that way. I know, you'll love me eventually. Let's see, Sam's at the soda machine over in the arcade room. Nothing like an ice cold Joja Cola on a sopping wet day, huh? That's definitely not Sam's voice. Um, Abigail is on the sofa. I don't think we've actually introduced ourselves to her yet. Oh, that's right. I heard someone new was moving on to that old farm. It's kind of a shame, really. I always enjoyed exploring those overgrown fields by myself. Um, Abigail is Pierre and Caroline's daughter. Uh, she is mixed race, uh, Filipino Chinese. She has black hair dyed purple. Uh, is currently wearing a beanie over it. And here's Sebastian, who is Robin's son, who is, um, I believe, Vietnamese, uh, Southeast Asian. He has an um, undercut with purple, uh, light purple hair swooped to the side, and a lip ring. Oh, you just moved in, right? Cool. Out of all the places you could live, you chose Pelican Town? Um, <laughs> Sam, Sebastian, and Abigail are definitely sort of a clique in Stardew Valley. They hang out together a lot. Anyways, time to walk very slowly back to my farm. You never realize quite how slow the walk speed is until you exhaust yourself. Like a fool. I'm moving at like 
one inch per hour. Oh my gosh. Please move your little legs faster. It's a good thing I definitely don't have anything to plant tonight. Just some fish to sell. Um, I'll put away the bait and the algae that I got. Take all my tools back out in preparation for tomorrow and go to sleep. Level one fishing. Day three, I actually made um, 652 money that day from fishing and foraging and that beer that uh, Gus gave me for free which I didn't drink and sold and said. Ah, sweet relief, I can run again. Oh no, there's a crow on my farm. Hey. Shoo. Meanie. All right, well, that's one of my parsnips gone. I think this is the last day I'm going to play tonight. Since I made enough money yesterday, I will probably spend part of today um, getting and planting some more seeds. might even have enough for some cauliflower. And right now I'm running up into the mountains. Ooh, I found a dig spot. Got some clay. Um, just to explore up here a bit. I haven't met one NPC who lives up here. His name is Linus. A stranger. Hello. Um, he is... Uh, older white man with white uh, bushy beard and hair um, who's wearing sort of natural made clothing and, and a flower wreath around his head um, and he lives in a tent up here in the mountains don't mind me I just live out here alone uh, right south of where he lives is Robin's house I think I need to meet the rest of her family. Um, I see Maru heading into town for work. I'm gonna catch her real quick. Hi, Maru. I plan on spending a lot of time with my telescope this summer. Okay, thanks. Pick a daffodil. Run back up to the house. Except it's not nine o'clock yet, so it won't quite be open. I'll just run around the mountain a little bit. There's a, a lake up here that's pretty good for fishing. I know I need to meet Robin's husband. Um, but I've met Maru and Sebastian. Hi, Robin. Has Jody said anything to you about her husband, Kent? He's serving overseas right now. She must worry terribly. Yeah, so Jody's husband is in the military. Let's see. Where's Robin's husband? He's in the kitchen. Good morning. Greetings, I'm Demetrius, local scientist and father. Thanks for introducing yourself. 
I'm studying the local plants and animals for my home laboratory. Have you met my daughter, Maru? I'm sure she'd like to meet you. I have. Uh, Demetrius is a black man. Uh, he is Maru's father, but not Sebastian's father. Um, I believe Sebastian is Robin's kid from a previous marriage. I don't remember if that's canonical or not, but it's canonical to me. Uh, coming down into town, um, there's the old community center up here, which is overgrown. Lots of vines and cracks in the walls and such. Um, which we will probably enter next time we stream. And down into town we have a store. Oh, somebody's posted something. Alex would like a ripe parsnip. I'll take that. I should have parsnips tomorrow, actually. Good morning, Pierre. I'm here to buy some cauliflower seeds. Let's see, can I buy nine of them? I can! Alright. I'll also buy my other... Her. I can't buy... I can. <laughs> I can barely buy my other six potato seeds. Alright. I'm broke again, but it's worth it. Oh, we didn't do our bus stop check. Bus stop check. Any foraging at the bus stop. Don't see anything today, actually. I've got six more potato seeds. They'll be two days behind the other ones. And nine cauliflower, which I'll put on the other side of the beans here. Got some more clay out of the ground there. There's a small chance, since I'm planting a nine, you know, a three by three square of cauliflower, there's a small chance that it might actually grow into a, a single uh, gigantic cauliflower. That usually doesn't happen, but it might. Um, you never know. Let's see, it's 12.40 p.m. I'm going to... I want to check my quests. Introductions. 25 of 28 people. Who am I missing? I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of my social list. Okay, I see which people I'm missing. <laughs> now, <laughs> I have to see if I can find them. Dig spot. More clay. Um, one of them is the elusive Elliot, who lives down by the beach, um, and only comes out of his house, like, relatively rarely. I'm gonna see if he's out. Because you can't go into his house unless you know him pretty well. You can't get to know him unless he comes out of his house. Uh, he doesn't appear to be outside right now. Wait, no, he is. He's at the general store. I just checked my map. Uh, I do have a map mod that tells me where all the villages are at any given time. I prefer to find them by myself. But I don't have their schedules memorized, so sometimes I don't know. There he is. He's shopping at the store. Ah, the new farmer we've all been expecting, and whose arrival has sparked many a conversation. I'm Elliot. I live in the little cabin by the beach. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, Elliot is a um, very dapper 
um, black man, probably around 30. He's got long dreadlocks uh, with nice cuffs. He always wears, like, vests and collared shirts. Um, very much a, a <laughs> classy, bordering on pretentious type of guy. I also need to find Haley, who is Emily's sister, and doesn't appear to be at their house right now. Which probably means, yep, that she's north of town by the fountain. little plaza up here with a, a nice fountain. There she is. Haley. Oh, you're that new farmer or whatever, aren't you? Huh? Oh, I'm Haley. Hmm, if it weren't for those horrendous clothes, you might actually be cute. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, we uh, happened to meet the two black characters with dreadlocks in a row. Um, she is also uh, black with long cuff dreadlocks. She's currently wearing a blue and yellow dress. She is very fashion forward in a different way than Elliot. She's very like... I don't know what way to describe it. Um... I don't know. They're, they both care a lot about their appearance in different ways. Um, I'm now going to the eastern side of town. Uh, I need to meet Clint, who is the blacksmith. There. Uh, hi. I'm Clint. I'm the town blacksmith. If you ever need to upgrade your tools, I'm your guy. Uh, he is a white man. Probably like 35 to 40. Um... Redhead, got a little red beard. And that's my introductions done. My next quest is to give someone a gift. So, right now I'm holding a wild horseradish and two daffodils. I'm gonna bet the daffodils will make a better gift. Um, and I see Penny sitting on a, a bench out here in, in the town square. So I'll give her a daffodil. Um, she says, We're very lucky to have a library in such a small town. When you're lost in a book, it's easy to forget the realities of your life. Maybe that's why I like reading so much. <laughs> Sorry, I got carried away there. Hey, Penny. Oh, thanks. This looks nice. All right, journal updated. How to win friends. Done. Penny and I are friends now. Actually, I probably have like, yeah, almost one heart out of 10 with her. But you know, it's progress. Um, almost six o'clock, let's do a saloon check-in. Hi, Emily. I hope you're farming in a sustainable way. The valley's ecosystem is fragile. How do I know? I have a strong gut feeling. Uh, okay. Gus. Pam and Clint come into the saloon almost every night. <laughs> I'd probably go out of business if they stopped coming. So make sure you don't drive them away. Speaking of which, Pam is here. I've been looking forward to this beverage all afternoon. <laughs> it's hard to read that line in a normal sounding way. And Shane is here. Sweet Yoba, what do I have to do to get you to leave me alone? Should I leave him alone? No, absolutely not. Alright. 6.20 p.m. It's probably going to be a bit early of a night tonight. Oops, I got stuck on a garden pot.
<sighs> but I am sleepy, and I think four days at a time is a pretty good, pretty good chunk of Stardew Valley. Next time we will probably start seeing the um, storyline stuff of the game, which is the community center and a wizard and um, a bunch of really <laughs> interesting and weird and, and rad stuff. But for now, uh, this is where I'm going to leave it. So, as always, I have been E. You can find um, my Twitter at CEL10E. Same username is here. Um, you can find my archive um, streams and videos on YouTube, also at CEL10E. Um, I will be posting this series to YouTube. Um, hopefully each video will go up within a week or two of when I stream it. Um, one of my goals for 2020 is that everything I post on YouTube will have full manual captioning rather than relying on closed captions or Google auto captions because they tend to be quite bad quality. Um, so there'll be a little bit more delay, but for the sake of higher quality, which uh, I think is going to be a very worthwhile trade-off. So with that, I'm going to go to sleep for the night. And call it good. Have a good night, everyone.